What does it mean to have great faith? It means confronting adversity with the Word of God. It means declaring God's promises even when facing great obstacles. It means seeing the promises of God. Great faith is placing your entire confidence in what God has said. Let this be a year of great faith. Let me just tell you, um, victory is always uh, an inspiration to us smaller churches. And so just keep doing what you guys are doing because uh, you're helping us even from a distance. We're watching and we are all inspired at uh, the growth and also the leadership that you, you guys uh, exemplify. I'm here tonight. Of course, it's a great honor for, for me to, to be able to do this. And uh, when Pastor Mark called me a couple of nights ago, I was like, what? Was, that, was that real? And then I got called again. And suddenly it dawned on me the weight of this moment. And... Uh, because I remember Pastor Paul Chase, who's the founder of New Life, spoke uh, to one of the meetings before. And then my, the, the former lead pastor, my pastor, the former lead pastor of uh, New Life here in the fort, also spoke here. And now I'm giving the oppor- being given the opportunity to speak as well. And I pray that I, I don't mess up. That's why yung scripture na lumalabas sa isip ko. I was thinking about speaking here. What, Lord, anong gusto mong share? And uh, the scripture keeps coming up that I do not come with excellence of speech or wisdom. And uh, I determine not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I hope that will be the main focus. But going back, I, I'm not here with persuasive words of human wisdom. And uh, I'm not here to impress anybody. But hopefully, what we gather together is a demonstration not of men, how good men can be, but a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. Not just during my time of speaking, but the time of prayer as well. And so, I pray that your great faith, as you have declared this year, will be rooted not in the wisdom of man, but with the power of God in the power of God. With that, let's talk about unity. And I think it's a great idea to invite somebody from, you know, outsider comfort zones, kumbaga. And by the way, just a disclaimer. Uh, I used to be part of Victory. This is many years back. And don't worry, I left well. Nagpaalam ako ng maayos. Okay? Because uh, there have been some instances na sa church, uh, my you know, people move from different places and uh, there have been, speaking about church unity, we need to be able to protect one another. I, I remember one time somebody, because in Market Market, there are several, church, several churches that would meet in the morning. And uh, there's a church there before, I think they moved uh, to another location now. But one time there was a group of people coming from that church, about uh, 10 to 15 of them, going to our church. And uh, yung usher na recognized na, wait a minute, workers to ng kabilang church, right? And before they entered, sabi ng usher, excuse me, um, uh, how can I help you? And they start to tell their stories na, uh, we have a problem with a the pastor there, so we're moving here. Buti na lang, may wisdom yung usher. Uh, tinuruan ng maayos. Sabi ng usher, uh, wag po kayong pumunta dito. <laughs> Ayusin niyo po yung problema niyo doon. Magpaalam kayo ng maayos bago kayo pumunta sa, sa church na to o sa ibang church. Thank you so much. <laughs> Close the door. <laughs> I think that's wisdom. And, and this idea of unity, unity is so fragile, so almost elusive kasi everybody wants unity. We have organizations in the world, big orga- organizations that desire to have unity in the world. But throughout world history, there's only some few years that you can call there's absolutely no war, 
people are fine with one another. At least they tolerate one another. It's an ancient desire. It's an ancient thought. It's an ancient idea to have unity. Pero bakit parang hirap i-achieve? What can we do? Now, let's go to church unity. Unity in the church. Because that's why we're here. And for the longest time, you know, there are many denominations and groups and whatever. In fact, I'm highly encouraged that over the past, uh, let's say, 15 years or so, there have been more unity in the churches that you can see. Because before, talagang, that's your group, this is my group, and whatever. But it's changing. And it's an encouraging thing. Uh, one manifestation of that is, I'm here. You know, there are other people. We are recognizing one another. But to tell you a bit of story about how fragile or sometimes how difficult it is to keep being united. Now, who among you have neighbors? No, me neighbors, Kayo. Kung wala, we will pray for you later on because it's sad, no? <laughs> but, um, and the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's a, at least we try to do that. And uh, um, I always ask, who among you have loved your neighbor the way God wants you to love your neighbor? Perfectly. Ito na lang, para mas safe tayo. Sino sa inyo sumablay dun sa, ano na yun, commandment na yun? Anybody? Some of you are not yet sure. <laughs> Andito ba talaga? B- baka gutom lang kayo or something. But lilipas din yan. Right? But speaking about unity, loving our neighbor is the commandment. But let's, let's not go to our neighbor. Sino sa inyong may mga kasama sa bahay? Pag wala rin, may we'll pray for you later on. <laughs> we have time. But here's the thing. Who among you can say that you have loved perfectly the way God wants you to love them, the very people that live in your house? Wala rin. O sino yung sumablay? Ayan, mas mabilis ako, right? Kasi nasa church tayo, bawal magsinungaling. Right? But even between husband and wife, who among you are married? Married? Yung iba hindi rin sure. Parang, ikaw yun. Tayo yun. Right? Okay lang, gutom lang yan. If we will be honest, even between husband and wives, we have not been perfect the way it's commanded in the scripture. So how do we do this? Uh, a couple of years back, I was in Israel, beautiful place, and uh, we took a group of people there. And we went to Bethlehem. Bethlehem is held by, um, they're, they're not held by the Jews, they're held by the Arabs. So, medyo may tension. And we went to the Church of the Nativity. And when we were there, the tour guide was, of course, touring us. Siyempre, binayaran siya para gawin yun. <laughs> Trabaho niya yun eh. And then one thing interesting that the guy said, he said, this area is held by the Greek Orthodox. One church. One church. Itong area na to is by the Armenians. Yung area na yon is by the Roman Catholics. One church, one building. And they say they can't, they can't do anything within their area without asking permission from the other group. In fact, this is, you can see this report in the internet, there have been brawls between monks, suntukan, between monks and their trainees because of cleaning duties. You know who they gave the, the, who they asked to help? This is church, okay? They asked the Palestinian police to keep the peace. Ibig sabihin, they asked the Muslims to ask to, for peace. Now, do you think that's a great example of church unity? Parang hindi, di ba? Because it is something that we all desire. But I think we need to go to Scripture and find out how we can achieve this unity because this unity cannot be achieved by our own powers. If the world, the world cannot do it. But there's one thing that we need to learn is that this church unity is not just our desire. desire that's His idea. So let me, 
let me give this backdrop in the scripture. Tingnan natin kung matapos natin tong skip some of these. I want to read this scripture. I think gagawin natin backdrop. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation. I don't know if you're familiar with that translation, but let me read throughout. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another, especially to those who may try your patience. Uh, who among you know people who try your patience? Yes? Sino po yung katabi nyo na? Ay, wag, wag, yung magtanat sa kamay. Okay. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit. Meron mga magkakatabi doon. Okay. <laughs> Among you in the bonds of peace, being one body and one spirit, as you were all called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. For the Lord God is one, and so are we, for we share in one faith, one baptism, and one Father. And He is the perfect Father who leads us all, works through us all, and lives in us all. And He has generously given each one of us supernatural grace according to the size of the gift of Christ. What can we glean from the scripture that we just read. Well, number one, you cannot divorce having unity with personal responsibility. Meron po tayong responsibility. Each and every person here, you cannot have peace without you being involved personally. In fact, uh, there's this story that I heard there's this guy who was, uh, who was found in an island. And uh, when the people discovered him in the island, parang may mga structures, may, may mga buildings dun sa island. Eh, siya lang mag sa island. Tinanong siya, please, ano, matagal ka na dito sa island na to, can you tell us ano yung mga structures na ginawa mo? Sabi niya, yan, yan yung bahay ko. Wow. That one is uh, where I rest and, you know, uh, put my food and whatever. Eh, ano isa? Parang, parang may cross. Iyan yung church ko. Wow, may church siya. Siya lang mag-isa. Ha? Tapos may nakita silang building na may cross din. Sabi na, eh, ano yung isa? May, may cross din. Sabi niya, ayun yung church ko dati. <laughs> parang may problema, di ba? Lumipat siya, pero dinalan niya yung problema niya. Church unity. There's personal responsibility. What did the scripture say a while ago? That with tender mercy... Let's look at that scripture again. The first part, it's here. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another, especially to those who may try our patience. You cannot separate having unity with peace. In fact, we'll get to that in a bit, a little bit more. Peace is something that is important. Love your neighbor, what's the end of the statement? As you love yourself. The thing is, how can you love yourself if you know you've made mistakes? That's a good question. Sometimes we can't properly love people because we do not, we do not know how to love ourselves. Personal responsibility is necessary. All of us here, you have, you have a part to play. You are important. Okay? So we'll set that aside for now. The next one. Um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, I like this. It says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, we live at peace with everyone. You have a part to play. Number two is that we need to recognize that you're not just on your own, but you are a part of a body. I know this has been spoken of many times in the church. But how deeply do we realize that we are not alone? You are unique. The Bible says, being one body and one spirit, as you were all called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. The, the right ear cannot be competing with the left ear who hears better. No, we hear way better if both are functioning according to the way it should function. We're not competing with one another. Do you know, uh, he can attest to this, we say this many times, we are not in competition with any other church. We're not in competition with victory. We celebrate your victories. We celebrate what God is doing in your place. We rejoice with you, right? 
because that is our heart. We honor who you guys are. We are part of the body. The Bible says here, now you collectively, you collectively are in Christ's body and individually you are members of it, each part severally and distinct, each with his own place and function. Sabi niyo sa katabi niyo, you have a part to play. Tell them, you are unique. Sabi mo, buti na lang wala kang katulad. Ay, de, wag. One of the more important things that we need to understand, yes, we are part of the body. Yes, you have personal responsibility. But there is this peace that binds us. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. You know, Jesus said, My peace I give you, not as the world gives. You see, the world is still trying to have that peace, but they cannot have, they cannot have true peace outside of realizing what Jesus Christ has done for them. Can you imagine on the, in Gethsemane before Jesus died, you know what he was thinking of? Father, I pray that they may be one as we are one. He was thinking about us together. Jesus paid for our peace. The scripture says, For God was pleased to have His fullness dwell in Him, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, by making peace through His blood shed on the cross. Mga kapatid, panalangin ko po na hindi tayo mag-graduate. We don't get over the fact that Jesus died for us. The very reason why we are here the very reason why we can boldly have great faith is because you have a relationship with God. He desired to have relationship with you even before you desired to have relationship with Him. You have peace with God. And this is not because you're so great. You have peace with God because He is so good. Can somebody give Him praise? Lastly, as we endeavor to end this time together, number one, there's personal responsibility. We are part of the body of Christ. Number three is that He paid for our peace. Again, tell your neighbor, peace be with you. Sa kabila naman, madami dami yan, peace be with you. There you go. Parang professional kayo, ha? Ginawa niyo na ito dati, no? Anyway, you, you cannot have unity outside of the grace of God. You cannot do it on your own. And as He has generously given each one of us supernatural grace according to the size of Christ's gift. In the book of Acts, they were so united. that They were so united that they said, you know, that they share things in common. But what was the thing that we read last? There's great power and there's great grace. How do we do peace? How can we have peace within the different churches? Well, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for His good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. God wants us to be united. But God will give us the power and the grace to fulfill our unity. Amen? Let me pray just for a bit. Let's go ahead, give Him praise. Walang half-hearted praise. <laughs> Father, we thank You for Your desire to have unity in the body of Christ. And we call forth, even now, for greater unity in the body of Christ. Lord, we are not dependent on personalities. We are dependent on the person of Jesus Christ. And we're dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit to give us the grace and all that we'll need to, lead, to live peaceably with one another. That we get to celebrate what makes us one instead of comparing and complaining and competing about the things that make us different. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we say that even from 2019 and all the way through the years, the world will realize that we are one body in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. <laughs>